So my aunt, she decides to join forces with my stepmother. Well, what is their goal? They want to throw me out of my house. They're trying to tell me that I'm good for nothing. I'm a freeloader living off my dad's dollar. But there's one thing that I didn't tell you guys yet. My aunt, she's in on it with me. And this is all a secret. Shh. My name's Maria. I'm 17 currently. For as long as I can remember, I've been tormented by a focal person in my life. My stepmom. This goes back years, beginning when my widower father, Jimmy, decides to marry again after the death of my mom. To recap, my mother's name was Alice. I don't have a lot of memories of her, seeing as she died when I was eight years of age, and a six-year-old doesn't remember much, but what I do remember of her is great. She was a painter, and extremely kind, and an absolutely loving person. She and my dad had a great marriage. From what dad told me later on, I had been an absolute miracle child. So, after a lot of miscarriages, and so when they had finally had me, they decided to stop trying for another kid. One of me was enough, apparently, as dad liked to joke. They knew that they could not handle more of me, and in short, the first six years of my life were spent being a normal and much-loved child and with these ordinary dreams and wants. And then, ah, my mom got sick. As I found out later, she was diagnosed with advanced stages of lung cancer. And within three months of her diagnosis, she was gone from this world. My dad and I had our whole world ripped apart from us within, what, a few months? and we did not know how to cope with everything. My mom's been much loved, and her absence had left a gaping wound in our lives. My poor father has been so in love with my mom, did not even know what to do. He could barely arrange for her funeral and all the arrangements that came afterward. And so it was decided that I would be sent to live with my Aunt Emma, who's my mother's sister. For a while, at least, until he managed to get his life back on track, and I did not want to go, of course, and kicked and screamed like anything at being separated from the only family I'd ever known. But I came to realize that it's been for the best, as my dad truly needed the time just to grieve and settle into the role of a young single father. As for me, this time I spent with Aunt Emma, it did me wonders, guys. She was so similar to my mom in both appearance and charismatics that I felt like I had my mother back but it made me more conscious of the differences which made me differentiate the two and help me move on. In a lot of ways, she even filled the gaps in my life that my mother left. She took me to ballet classes and to the class play rehearsals, took me shopping for girly outfits and jewelry, and fed me enough sweets and chocolates to last me an absolute lifetime. I always loved her, but we did go to develop an even more special intimate bond in the time period. I saw my dad every two weeks, and over the passage of time, I saw how he returned to life again. Six months after I went to live with my aunt, my dad asked me to come back and live with him. We lived like that for two years till I was around 11 years old when suddenly, Julie entered his life. Julie wasn't much younger than him at 30 years old, but was extraordinarily beautiful and single with no children. They met at a grocery store, and Julie asked him out on a date right away. My father, who was not uh, dating at all since, you know, mom passed away, um, got flustered and felt bad saying no. They exchanged numbers, and after my dad came home, he told me that he would cancel if I did not like the idea of him dating again. Of course, seeing my dad go through absolutely so much, I mean, I was more than ready for him to get back into the dating scene. I gave him my approval, and the rest was history. He and Julie soon started dating, and she started coming around the house. Her visits soon grew more and more frequent, and at first I really liked her. She seemed nice, and my dad seemed happy with her, which made me happy. And she behaved extremely well with me, too. She always showed interest in me and my school life when she was over, and brought me a small gift every time she was here. She used to tell me that she was glad my father had me, and that she would love to be a part of our little family. And I don't know, I guess, in this sort of way, slowly but surely, she warmed her way into our lives and heart. My dad was enamored with her and liked how she treated me. So after around eight months of dating, he asked me whenever I would like if, you know, he got married with her. And she became my new mom. 
I told him that I had no problem with it at all, and soon he proposed to her. They got married in a quiet little ceremony with very few people present, and my father said that he wanted to be respectful of his late wife, my mom, and that was the way that they were going to do it. So, that was the first time I saw Julie get mad. She concealed it well and did not seem to let the situation bother her in the least, but however, she got really quiet and curt with everyone after Dad first announced his plans and gave me the cold shoulder for at least a week. I tried to be understanding as it was her big day after all. It was my first glimpse into what she was really like. Soon after the marriage, her behavior changed completely towards me. I mean, she still doted on and fawned over my dad, but mostly ignored me. When I told her that I would like to spend time with her, or go out with her to go shopping or eating or anything like that, she just would always tell me, over and over, that she didn't have time. She was just always out with girlfriends, but gave Dad the impression that she worked hard at home, taking care of the home and me. When we were in front of Dad, she would always be really, really nice to me and showed a lot of interest in my life. But when he wasn't around, she mostly acted like I simply did not exist. I gave her a lot of leeway at the start. Maybe she was enjoying her newly married life and half-grown-up kid did not quite factor into that. Especially since my dad had included me in their honeymoon trip as well. <laughs> Especially that, yeah. Maybe she did not want to get saddled with a kid after all. She's been childless before and having a kid thrust upon you suddenly would, of course, be a lot to handle. I gave her plenty of time to adjust, thinking that she would warm up to me slowly. She did not, though, and as the years went on, we fell into a routine. With both of us trying our best just to please father and give others the space to live their life peacefully. So it went on and on and on until my 17th birthday. My 17th birthday was a special occasion for my father, who had met my mom when they were both 17. On my birthday, he announced that he was giving me a special gift. He said that the lake house that had been in our family for generations and the place where we had first met mom was going to be mine very, very soon. He said it was a very special place for him, and he wanted me to have it from then on. I'd always loved the lake house, and had always cherished the stories that he had told of him and mom involving the place. I was understandably thrilled and told him thank you. I hugged him, telling him that I could not have asked for a better gift. He said that he was going to get the paperwork started soon, and the house would be in my name by the time my 18th birthday rolled around. It was an extremely joyous occasion and I talked to my dad's ear off at the time, telling him that I was thrilled that it wasn't wonderful and that I would always cherish the memories that he had told me about. But there was one person who was not thrilled at all. That person was Julie, who watched me with a narrowed stare all the while and when dad asked her what she thought about my present, she gave a fake smile and said that she thought it was great and she had no idea that dad was going to give me such a priceless gift. You see... She really, really liked that lake house and would host a party for her circle of friends there every year. I got the feeling that she wanted the lake house for herself mainly for two reasons. She'd always been kind of jealous of my mother and her relationship with my dad and I hated talking about her to the extent that she would try to change the topic every time mom was brought up in conversation. And the second reason was oh so obvious. The lake house was the priciest piece of real estate that father owned. Thanks to its beautiful design, its location, no wonder she wanted to get her grubby hands on it. But of course, as his daughter, I had the first right to everything he owned, and I thought she would get over the shock. Gradually. Turns out she did not. Her behavior towards me turned more, which has mostly been indifferent to me the most part of our relationship. It suddenly turned sour and bitter. She became actively antagonistic towards me. She began playing these weird tricks on me, trying to psych me out. It was as if she suddenly developed an intense hatred for me overnight. Two days after my birthday, my dad was on a trip out of town, and I came home at around 9 at night to find myself locked out. I tried calling Julie multiple times and rang the doorbell a few times as well, but to absolutely no avail. I had to sleep over at a friend's house, and the next day I told my father what happened, saying that I was really surprised and scared that nobody had picked up my calls. 
Julie glossed over the entire incident, saying that she had gone to bed at around 11, and she thought that I had been home by then, which was why she had locked the doors. She said that she had taken a pill to sleep, and that's why she had not heard me calling and knocking. She didn't turn the conversation around on me, asking me what I've been doing outside so late at night anyways. I told my dad that it's been around 9 at night and that Julie was lying. Julie looked shocked and started to cry, saying that she had no reason to lie and that I was the one lying to cover up my actions. Shockingly enough, my dad took her side, saying that she really didn't have a reason to lie and that he was sure I had missed the time and gotten home later than I thought I had. He told me to be a bit more careful in the future and you know what, I could not believe my ears. How could he side with her and not me? So, I don't know, I just ran upstairs crying, angry, and I did not talk to him for a whole week after that. We eventually smoothed things over, but I still felt uneasy about the whole incident. I mean, come on. Update number one. Anyways, it was my senior year. I was applying to a lot of universities and was actively working on my portfolio. I had chosen a private university two states away from my college education and was looking for scholarships for the program that I wanted to get into. I had shared this plan with father at dinner one time, saying that there was a lot of great activities and clubs there and that I could try out different stuff and find out more things that I enjoyed. Julie had been present there as well and a few months into my senior year, Julie announced at dinner one night that she had gone to the trouble of collecting brochures and pamphlets about universities abroad for me. I told her that, you know what, I'm quite content here and I was planning on going to the university here, where I could be near my father. She said that she herself had gone to university in Europe and the experience there had been defining her life. She said that immersing myself in different cultures and experience was a good idea and that it would really help me grow and find myself. My dad responded that he thought it was actually a great idea and agreed with her. I knew that as a shrewd woman she was, she would never think of my well-being. She must have a stake in sending me away for college or something. Every day after this, she would find a way to bring up my college and drone on and on about the benefits of going abroad to study. I doubled down in return, telling my father again and again and again that I wanted to stay there with dad and that I was not going anywhere. After about a month of this, she suddenly stopped talking about college at all. I knew that she had something else up her sleeve, but I could not have imagined the level which she had sunk. Update number two. The next thing she did was really weird. I had a boyfriend at the age of 16 and we had broken up about six or seven months ago at the time. The breakup had been amiable and it had been one of those relationships that you have in your teenage years where you're experimenting with life in general. Anyways, we haven't really spoken at all since the relationship ended, so I was surprised to see his bike parked outside when I came home one afternoon. This was after Julie had suddenly fallen silent about the whole university issue. I walked inside the house to see my father, Julie, my ex-boyfriend Elijah, all gathered in the living room. I asked my father, what the heck is going on? He didn't answer me and just angrily gestured toward Elijah. He had an ashamed expression on his face and he thrust a bag out at me. I asked him what's inside and he answered that it was the weed that I've paid for and he was delivering it to me. He starts to apologize, saying that he knew he had gotten me in trouble and that he did not think that my dad would have been home at this time, which was why he had come inside with the intention of dropping it off. I was flabbergasted and asked him, dude, what are you talking about? I'd never done drugs and certainly never bought any from him or given him any type of money at all. I asked him if this was some sort of joke and that they were all just playing it on me because it's certainly not a funny one. He said it was not a joke and that he had already told my father the truth, that I've been doing drugs for the entirety of the relationship with him as well. I turned to father, telling him not to believe a word Elijah was saying, that he was making the whole thing up and that he could not doubt his own daughter like that. I had good grades, I was active in extracurriculars, and was the behavior of someone on drugs? 
Most importantly, was he going to take a random kid's word over mine? Julie jumped in, saying that she had been too lax with me and told my dad that it was all her fault. She was my mother and she should have paid extra attention to what I was doing and prevented me from falling into the wrong sort of habits. Of course, I knew then and there that somehow Julie planned this. I accused her of setting me up, telling her that I knew she was the one who was behind this. I also said that she had been after me for weeks and I had not figured out yet what she was after and what she wanted from me or even the reason for the antagonizing against me. But I was going to figure it out, and the day that I did, I was going to make sure that Dad kicked her out of the house for good. My dad then angrily told me to mind my manners and that Julie had never said or done any single negative thing to me, and that I was out of line. He said that the way I was acting, he could very well believe that I had in fact been taking drugs. He said that he was willing to forgive everything but the way that I had attacked Julie. He can't. He told me to either apologize or get the heck out of the house. Now, extremely angry, I told him that I was not going to apologize if I had not done anything wrong. And I definitely was not going to own up to doing drugs when I've never touched them in the first place. I told him that he would soon find out the truth. And you know what? Well, the day he did, he was going to be extremely sorry, and when that day comes, I wasn't sure that I was going to even forgive him. I stormed upstairs, packed a few toiletries into a small bag, and then I left the house. Well, I knew that my father was going to be seeing the reason soon enough. He was blinded momentarily, but he would never give up on his only child just like that. So, I wasn't worried. I called a friend and asked if I could crash over at their place just for a few nights. She didn't have any issues with it, and I blocked Julie and my father's number, and I went to stay at my friend's house. Later that day, I paid a visit to Elijah's house, and I simply told him to explain everything that he had pulled that day. He confessed, after a little pressure, and said that he had needed some money for his expenses and Julie had offered him a lot more than he even needed. He said that he was sorry, absolutely sorry, for what he's done. He again said that he was sorry over and over and he wished that he could help me out and that he knew he should not have done this to me at all. But he was in a tight position and now I could not afford to say that he's been lying. I realized that I was not going to get any help from him and asked him if he had any idea while Julie was even doing this to me. He said that Julie had never discussed anything of that sort with him. And I left, and then I went back to my friend's house. Update number three. Well, of course, guys. As I predicted, Dad saw reason within a week and managed to track me down and said that I want you to come back home at once and I'm sorry I miss you and I think I've been just a bit too harsh on you. I said that Elijah's been lying and that I still wasn't owning up to having done any drugs. He said that he was fine with that and that he just wanted me to come home. Well, I did not even have to apologize to Julie if I didn't want to, so I agreed in the end and told him that it was best to put it behind us. I knew that Julie would be infuriated by my returning and thinking of new, fouler ways to just create a rift between my father and me. So, I started plotting on my own. After a few days of thinking, I had my plan ready. I called Aunt Emma and told her to make an excuse and come visit us for a while. She immediately called my dad and said that her home needed a bit of work done and that she was thinking of staying with us for a while. My dad immediately agreed. And that was that. She packed her bags and came over the next day. Well, she and Julie have never particularly gotten along, with her being my dead mom's sister and all. But since I had told her the entire plan from the start, she showed ready to act her heart out. So, Aunt Emma worked for an airline, and as such was rarely in town, which was why Julie had never seen us interact with each other much before. Aunt Emma showed up at our house and immediately, and I mean immediately, starts lavishing Julie with all sorts of compliments, telling her how she looked much younger every time that she saw her, and that she simply had to share her skincare routine with her because it was phenomenal. Anyways, Julie, as vain as she actually was, 
Agreed, and the two started talking soon. I soon excused myself and stood outside the room eavesdropping, and once I was gone, Aunt Emma told Julie in a low, hushed voice that she was surprised Julie had not gotten rid of me yet. Julie asked her what she meant by that, and Aunt Emma told her that she had been forced to put up with me for such a long time after the death of my mother, and I've been such a burden to her. She had barely tolerated me, and Julie immediately said that she knew I was a brat, and that she had done the same thing for years, but now she was going to make me pay. Aunt Emma asked her, well, what had happened? And Julie finally confirmed that I had gotten my dad to give me the lake house instead of her. According to Julie, she deserved it more as she had put up with me for so many years and never had kids of her own because my dad had said that I was enough for him and that it would be too painful for him and insulting mom's memory too. Aunt Emma then told her that she was a big believer in spirituality and firmly believed that I was a cursed child and that my mother's cancer and her death had been my fault entirely. It was, in fact, my bad energy that had caused her to fall sick in the very first place. I snuck away with a little grin upon my face. Ah, everything was going perfect to plan. Now Aunt Emma was going to trick Julie into believing all her lies and get on her side. That was when the fun would start. Aunt Emma and I made sure not to communicate with each other at all in person, only talking through text message and saving each other's number with a different name. But the plan was not completely in place yet. Aunt Emma needed to prove to Julie that she was irrevocably on her side. Update number four. The next development, my dear friends, was just as planned. Two days after Aunt Emma came over, in the afternoon when Dad was not at home, well, she burst into my room and after her arrival, I had mostly kept to my own room, just leaving for mealtimes and such, and I jumped up asking her what she's doing in there without knocking. She starts to scream at me, saying that she was going through Mom's old things in Dad and Julie's bedroom and had been looking over the jewelry that Mom had left behind. She said that there was a pearl necklace that Mom had possessed and that she had asked her to take it after she was gone. She said some other small jewelry items of Mom's were missing as well. She then accused me of taking them out of the safe. I insisted that I did not have them, and even if I did, I was mom's daughter, had every right to use her stuff. Aunt Emma then starts screaming that I ruined her sister's life and that I was cursed and would never let my dad live in peace either. Julie then came a running after having heard the commotion and asked Emma what's happening. Emma repeated what she said and that she knew that I was hiding mom's stuff from her. She then went to my closet and starts going through my stuff throwing out just everything, really. I mean, random clothes and all. In the bottom of drawer, she found the jewelry she had mentioned and held it up, saying that I was a lying brat and was going to make sure to get rid of me and just wait and see. She then stormed out of the room with Julie just following her, smirking in my direction. Two days later, I got a message from Aunt Emma detailing what was going to happen next. She said that she had been talking to Julie and they had both decided that it was time to play their final card. Aunt Emma had suggested a plan to Julie that this time they put drugs into my drink at dinner with dad and just make me act all loopy. Yeah, well, since obviously I have never done drugs or even drank alcohol, the effect would be absolutely disastrous. And Aunt Emma would convince Julie that she would be the one to spike my drink. And while she was doing so, Aunt Emma would record the whole thing, just like she recorded all previous conversations between herself and Julie. Afterward, she would switch my drink with a regular one, and I would pretend that I had drunk the spike one so I could be in control of my senses. Aunt Emma and Julie then arranged a lavish dinner under the pretext that Aunt Emma had gotten a promotion at work. Aunt Emma said that she was going to make us all mocktails. My dad came home early that day and we all had dinner together. Halfway through the dinner, Aunt Emma brought out the drinks and I drank mine all in one go and then prepared to give the performance of a lifetime. Five minutes after I had consumed the supposed spike drink, I reached out, staggering the hands on the door and knocked over the jug of water. 
My dad looked over at me very, very surprised. I said, oopsie, in a sing-song voice and reached out once more to pick up the knocked over jug. I lifted the jug high and then let it slip through my fingers, falling to the ground where it broke into pieces. I even did a little drunken giggle. <laughs> right there as I slurred a voice too and, you know, said no worries, I'd clean it up right away. I then got up and then knocked into the dining table, tripping and falling to the ground. My dad got up in alarm, asking me if I was feeling okay. Julie got up as well, pretending to just a fawn over me, checking me to see if the glass had cut me anywhere. I pushed her away. I called her a certain word and told her to get away from me. She gasped loudly, asking what's wrong with me, and I cackled, telling her that she should show her fake niceness elsewhere and it's wasted upon me. She had never really cared about me and just simply tried to sabotage me over a stupid lake house and made me miserable and discounted in my own home, which was why I had turned to drugs like this. It was my dad's turn to look so shocked. He asked me if I knew what I was saying that I had just confessed to using drugs. Well, I giggled saying that it was the least of what I've done and that it was all Julie's fault. I told him that I've stolen tons of stuff from Julie and mom and had sold them for money. I went on and on making up stuff and my dad grew angrier by the second and then yelled at me that he had it with me and was kicking me out forever. So I left just as we planned and after dinner, Aunt Emma went ahead to ask Julie what she was planning on doing next. Julie told her that she was going to get the lighthouse back from me and that she was going to make sure that my father cut me completely out of the will. This was the last conversation Emma needed to record and she then told me to come back inside and we both went to my dad with the proof. Well, I guess you can imagine he was pretty angry upon seeing me inside the house again, but I told him that I've been acting the entire time. I then showed him everything and made him listen to Julie confessing all her sins. Well, he grew more shocked by the minute. And when we were done and all of Julie's wrongdoings had been revealed, he sat silent for a minute. He then yelled out Julie's name, who came running into the room. He told her that the game was up and he was no longer blinded by her smile and fake niceness. He had seen her real face and the last it was enough to make him divorce her. So... I then smugly told Julie that it was my turn to get revenge for all the petty actions that she's taken against me, and I made sure to reveal everything. I then showed her all the videos, and Aunt Emma revealed that she had been on my side the entire time. Julie sputtered and stammered, trying to give all sorts of explanations, but my dad quietly walked out of the room. Final update. Hey guys, sorry that this last update is a little late. So, he divorced her two weeks later, right? Two weeks. Presenting all the proof of her betrayal inside of court, he consented to paying a small amount of money as alimony every single month. After this, he went ahead to apologize to me profusely, saying that he had thought that I was in the wrong and he should have just trusted me instead of Julie. Ah, whatever. I forgave him almost instantly, of course, and I thought that was the last we would see of her, but just a few weeks later, I realized that Julie had gotten a foul idea from my drunken tirade and stole several pieces of my mom's jewelry before leaving the house permanently. We filed a case against her and my dad sued her in court, and the police then raided Julie's new place and found receipts of the sales that she made with stolen jewelry. She was arrested, later tried in court, and with the court ordering her to serve an eight-month sentence for stealing our valuables, my dad also asked the court to reverse the alimony payment decision, and after looking at the case, the court decided in his favor. This way, Julie would never get another penny from us ever again. So, I have to agree with the comment section on this one. It just seems a lot like, uh, Jimmy. OP's father was not trusting at all, and he went straight for Julie, OP's stepmother, and just listened to every single thing that she had to say, completely blindly, and if it was not for OP's aunt in today's story, I don't think the situation ever 
would have gotten better. I do want to hear from you guys though. Let me know in the comment section down below what you would have done if you were in OP's unique position. And uh, thankfully, Aunt was there and she was a great actor. She recorded all the evidence, she showed it to OP's father, and everything seemed to have worked out. I want to know your thoughts about it, though, so let's talk about it in the comment section, guys. My name's Mr. Reddito. I hope you guys enjoy today's stories, and if you want to be a part of these day-to-day -day readings, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, guys, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. I'll see you guys tomorrow.